we got to start off with the USMNT getting stunned. Getting absolutely stunned by Panama. The USMNT came into this game with three points off of a win from Bolivia against Bolivia. Panama coming off in a more desperate situation as they fell to Uruguay 3-1. And Panama was able to defeat the United States men's national team 2-1 behind the goal in the 83rd minute from Jose Fajardo that gave Panama the victory, essentially. Go ahead, goal. They also actually had a man sent off in this game later on in the 88th, 89th minute. As a, um, uh, But the main story is the Timothy Weah being sub, uh, red carded because that was the real red card that affected the game. The Panamanian red card came in the 88th minute, uh, much later in the game. The red card from Timothy Weah came 18 minutes in and just completely changed the game for the USMNT. The USMNT came out on the front foot as expected, going up against Panama on the front foot, creating opportunities. Actually ended up getting a goal that got called out for offsides. Tim Reem ended up being slightly off. Uh, uh, VAR uh, VAR came in and rolled it off. And you know, it was smooth sailing from the US. It was really smooth from the United States at that point. Then this moment of madness occurs in the 18th minute off the ball. Timothy Weah appears to strike one of the Panamanian hate players on the head. It looked like a, it looked like a open-handed, open-handed hit. Looked like more like a slap. It wasn't really a punch, but still straight into the head of the Panamanian player. In this day and age, with video, with the amount of cameras there are, um, with VAR, you can't get away with things like that. VAR eventually ruled it to be a red card and from then on it completely changed how the game was going to be played playing with 10 men that early on but um, that did not stop the U.S. though from immediately being able to get that go-ahead goal which is one nil to make it one nil which was an absolute banger of a goal from Fuller and Valigan who's really came into form over these past uh, over this Copa America up to this point scoring a goal in the last game and the overall performance he had this game with the with a wonder goal it was a world class finish right up of the uh, uh, right off the post couldn't place it perfectly even uh, couldn't place it even more perfect and yet pe- 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 United States was able to get that goal get that 1-0 lead and from then on you know from then on you find yourself in a situation well we're down to 10 men we still ended up getting the lead we have to you know the the very disappointing thing is like they had the lead they got the lead after they got the red card and they weren't able to close that out they weren't able to defend that lead and you kind of have to have a sense of realization okay we get this goal lead it's time to close shop park the bus and just play for that and but panama immediately immediately i'm talking about in a spam of 15 minutes after we're able to not not 15 three minutes later was able to find a uh equalizing goal and honestly that goal was a well-worked goal from panama it was an it was a, a brilliant play from the team moving in from one end you could see the midfielders they had a lot of ground that they had to cover you could really tell how hard it was to play 10 men on that goal they were they got the, the ball got passed around the midfield you see uh, uh Gio Reyna and Tyler Adams they accidentally pressed the open man and the one ball in behind opened up so much space then um then McKinney he stepped up and then you know and then they eventually found um eventually found um uh, uh, I forgot the name of the name of the striker uh Blackman. It eventually found Blackman. It looked like initially it took a deflection when I watched it live, um, uh, but um, you know, because it, it looked like he kind of scuffed the shot, but it still found its way into the corner. Found its way past Matt Turner, and you know, from then on, you know, the it was clear to me that the U.S. were going to be in trouble in this game in terms of getting the result, and it's an important. A very important game for the USMNT. Very important for Panama as well. But um, now, because 
now with that goal coming in, making it 1-1, you find yourself in a struggling position. And from then on out, it was just United States defending. Um, I thought, you know, I thought they did dig in, though. I thought they, uh, the work rate was there from the team. The effort was there. There was a lot of ground that they had to cover. But overall, just they just couldn't get it done. Um, they did defend well for long stretches, and then, and then, in my opinion, the thing that's also a lot of, uh, that is actually frustrating about this is it's an individual mistake, in my opinion, from Anthony Robinson on that goal. When you look at the fact that number one, when the initial ball, um, when the initial ball comes in into his area, he kind of lose track of the Panamanian, uh, uh, Panamanian attacker on uh, on the backside of him, and then to you know. And then to you know add on to even more of his mistake, he decides to commit on a on a ball into one of the other Panamanians. He doesn't get near it. He finds the space to bring in the cross, and then two one. And then even on top of that, Ethan Horvas he gets two hands, not even one hand. He gets two hands on the ball. Um, so you could argue maybe he could have done better on the goal. By the way, Matt Turner had to get subbed off injured. Looked really out of it. Had to get subbed off at halftime. Um, and yeah, Matt Turner um, uh, came in and, uh, or Ethan Horvath came in and in my opinion in that second goal, he, he could have done better. He gets two hands on the ball. Now I know it's direct and that's all, you know, that's hard to make it whenever it's so, um, so, so close, so, um, so point blank. But, you know, if you get two hands on the ball, you know, you should be able to do better. And it's really disappointing the ways that they conceded especially that second goal when you know there's a numerous ways to concede against playing against 10 men and that way it's just it's just frustrating or playing with 10 men and that way is a little bit frustrating it's also frustrating the way that they got to 10 men when you look at Timothy Weah that has a, that was no play that affected the game you know like you know you don't excuse it something you still get criticism but like you know you can understand, you know, one of those denying obvious goal scoring opportunity red cards, or you know maybe a dangerous play that he did it, like on accident, but this is just complete and other, um, you know, selfishness, and and really, uh, uh, really a bad moment for Timothy Weah, who hasn't had a history of this. He's never really proven to be this kind of player. This hap This is kind of a one-off situation. But still, in this moment, do you remember the way Sergino Dest um, was able to, was uh, criticized? Uh, his, his criticism was really bad. It was, it was really, really bad after that red card. I think this is just as bad, and if not worse, because of the situation we find ourselves in. You know, that was a Nations, I believe it was a Nations League game. You know, not the biggest stakes in the world, in my opinion, compared to this. Copa America, this is potentially kind of, you know, potentially kind of knock you out of Copa America in the group stages. It is, it's, it's a huge, huge red card. And the biggest, and the, also another big thing about this is that, you know, and that, you know, that slap or punch or whatever you want to call it, that might have, that may very well cost Greg Berhalter his job. Because I'll tell you what, even the U.S. men's national team in this U.S. Soccer Federation that I do not, um, that I'm not a, um, a fan of, I've been clear about it, not the team, but the federation, even they're not going to be able to, in my opinion, be able to write off not getting out of the group stages with Panama and Bolivia. Maybe this red card gives them an out saying, you know, finds himself a scapegoat, but there is no way. And also... The U.S. did get very lucky at the same time because Uruguay was able to put a pounding on Bolivia today. I believe it was 5-1. So they have extreme goal differential now um, over any uh, over uh, Panama and the U.S. They you know so they have they put themselves in a situation where they're gonna rest, and that does give the U.S. MNT a chance uh, if Uruguay rests. It really does. It, it's a big big thing. But at, at the same time, the U.S. are going in there needing a win because they, they cannot rely on Bolivia taking points off Panama. They, they can't rely that. Bolivia is the worst team in this tournament. Panama is a better team than Bolivia. So they can't go in with that sort of mentality. The, um, 
that a draw might be enough. No, the U.S. men's national team has to win and has to beat Uruguay. And that's that's exactly the opposite of what the U.S. men's national team wanted this Uruguay game to be. At max, they wanted this game to be the you know the group title, the group first place group decider, not to keep them in the Copa America. Huge, huge loss for the U.S. MNT. Greg Berhalter, look, I've made it clear on him, on my thoughts on him, on not being a good enough manager. Um, as far as this game, I, there's, I don't have major critiques of him because being a red card puts you in a dangerous situation already. But I will say this, at halftime, he makes a triple substitution. One is replacing Matt Turner, okay? The other two is taking off Tyler Adams and Giovanni Rena. Now, Tyler Adams, maybe I'll excuse this because he just has a 45-minute threshold. But Giovanni Reda is a player that, you know, you can't play him in midfield with 10 men. Just not enough, just not enough work rate from him. Not enough legs. So why wait till halftime to make that decision? Why not, if you're going to make it at halftime, why not sub him out immediately after the red card and completely change it up? That's what the top managers would do. That's what the top managers would do. They were not going to wait 45 minutes for morale or anything like that. If he believes that Gio Reyna can't do the job with 10 men in midfield, you either move him to a different position and adjust it or blah, 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 or you sub him out immediately. There's no time to waste. There is no time to waste. And they went on it so, uh, um, very soon after to score that equalizer. So, yeah, it's a... You know, but at the end of the day, he's not the main one to blame for today's performance. Today's performance has to go a lot like squarely on Timothy Weah. You can't make the mistake that he made. But, you know, the USMNT's Copa America, just like Mexico, has gotten to the point where the US Copa America is in grave, grave danger. And this, it probably in because of the fact that Uruguay is probably not going to play their first team, probably similar level. But if Uruguay was not resting players. I'm going to the point where I'm saying it's over for the U.S. There's no way they get to the knockout stage. That's just the reality we find ourselves in. Uh, Brazil, 